Hey guys, how are you doing? This is my fourth vlog for the training series with me. And if you guys are still here watching my deload week, I want to thank you for that because it is not as exciting as the previous few episodes. You guys are the true diehard fans and I really appreciate it. And thanks for the support for this past close to two months. And I really hope that we can provide more for you. So if you guys have any input or any questions, feel free to put them down in the comment section below or you can just private message me on my Instagram. Anyway, this week, what we are really focusing on for the deload week is to really pay more attention to the technique. So in the previous weeks, what I was intentionally doing was to really push the weights and really push myself to the limits and see how well I can perform with that given intensity. Obviously for the deload week, I have reduced the volume as well as the intensity. So this works well for me because it really gives me a lot of physical and also a bit of a mental break too. So when you have quite an intense training weeks prior to the deload week, you will definitely need to calibrate your deload week so that you can be more rested and be ready for the next block. So here we go and I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's start. So this time around, I have a different layout for you. Basically, I'm showing you what I have to do for the day. And honestly speaking, I'm not afraid to show you guys what and how my program is like all the time because it's it's very different. If you There's no such thing as copying my program and then becoming as strong as me, for example. So every training program should be customized. You can use my program as, as a template, but it might not work for you. So honestly speaking, if you want to progress and you need a training program to get you improving, come and look for me straight away. You don't have to copy, all right? So here we go. Today, I'm working up to pretty lightweight at about 205. So this is my first working set. Honestly speaking, it was a little bit heavy. Uh, not on my back, it's just in general. Um, I've already lived out of the right lower back strain already, so I'm pretty happy about it. Surviving through one whole intense block of uh, the feeling of the right lower back strain, and then eventually it gone away. So it was pretty relieved, and not I'm not so surprised about that. Um, relief on the lower back because I have paid so much attention and do a lot of rehab and prehab movements to help me work around with the lower back issue so if something like this happened to you probably you should do some like exercises prior to your training and after your training to help you relieve and improve that condition of the lower back strain so once again this is I believe my last set of 205 so moving on to the bench, uh, this week I put a lot a lot of attention into the bench trying to work the ascent of the lift. So you can see I'm paying a lot of focus on trying to push the weight a little bit more with intent. So previously what I realized was I am too focused on the descent or part of the lift now that I am quite good at it I must say. I have to focus on the pushing part so as to make that lift perfect and complete. So. The thing that I was paying attention to was that lat engagement, forcing that lat to work even harder when I'm pressing, so that will help me improve. So this is a bonus kind of clip for you. I'm going to show you how my warm-up routine is like. So the first one is like a VMO activation. So I used to have a lot of um, knee inflammation. Um, basically when I squat I will feel that uh, knee uh, knee discomfort feeling so to speak so this isolation drill will help me warm up the legs even faster and even better and get me started for my squats or deadlift if I have to do it for the day so the next one is one of the exercises that I use and I give it to most, most of my clients with lower back issues this is a very good drill. It's supposed to be a 90-90 on the floor, but I'm too lazy to lie down, so just do it on the wall. So basically, I'm flexing my lower back and then flexing my back even more at the lowest part of the spine. 
to tuck my hips in so that I can feel the full stretch of the lower back. And at the same time, this is multifunctional exercise because you can basically engage your core and warm up the core as well. So I purposely leave my shoulder blade off the wall so that I can get that um, flex lumbar as much as possible. Moving on to the next exercise, well this is just a basic stretch but um, what I will feel in this position is basically feeling the stretch on the hamstring, the lower back and I'm trying to flex my spine as much as possible so that I'm more mobile to move around whichever way I want, uh, for example for squats and most leave or bench where I need to arch more so I'm freeing up that range of motion then the next thing I'm doing is trying to you know warm up my hips by doing this rocking about motion so stretching and then move down to feel my hips a little bit make sure that I'm okay and ready to squat and then the next I uh, will follow it through by doing some bodyweight squats So just a couple of reps, I can't remember how many I do. You don't have to be strictly 8 reps or something like that. Just do until you feel that you're warmed up. And then the next exercise I'm going to do is to free up the my shoulders. So I'm just going to do some easy shoulder dislocate. But with a twist, as I'm coming down, I pay a lot of attention to engage my lats. Because I need them for bench. And then try and uh, raise my chest up to extend that thoracic spine a bit. And then I'll follow it by doing a little bit of band pull apart, mimicking the movement of the bench press. So basically bending my elbows while feeling the rhomboid tightness as I descend the, bar, the band towards my sternum. So as you can see here, most of my warm-up are like uh, one exercise that fits all to other aspects of the lift. So I'm, I'm really trying not to waste time here. Warm-up should be short and sweet. More compound kind of exercises and then the last exercise I'm giving myself is more VMO uh, activation drill so with the band right behind your knees it's gonna force you to lock even harder so that will really fire up my the muscles needed to uh, for the ascent of the squats and then last but not least uh, sumo glute hole for the external rotation so that for the activation of the glute medius and some of the abductors getting myself ready for sumo if I have to and this is it so let's move on to day two um, yep so as you can see this is what I have for day two deadlifts and uh, bench I always like to start myself with bench press because um, really I, I take quite a while for me to focus so with bench which is not really neat like the focus don't have to be 100% so I can just do it while I get myself warmed up and ready for the deadlifts so this is a three count pause bench and um, I can't tell you how much I love this exercise because it really helps me to establish how much I need to stay tight at the bottom of the bench and it really helped me feel the leg engagement as I push. So one of the feedback that I experienced if I do, did it right is when I engage my legs to push, I feel my whole chest are elevating. So sometimes if you bench, if your chest starts to sink down, uh, this is something that you want to work on. Okay, moving on to my heaviest deadlift for the day which is 275 pretty easy just doubles so I think I did it pretty much effortlessly with Leiting watching me she was one of the strongest lifters female lifters in Singapore back at her time now she's pregnant and moving on to the next part of her life so this is my back offset I think I'm in I was supposed to do doubles but I end up doing triples because it really felt easy and, and I just want to finish the workout. So this is day three squats and bench. Um, one of my heavier days for the week and warming up at 170, aiming towards 225 kg for triples. So guys, yeah, last week I did two two five for five reps and when I was doing 225 for three uh, for this week. It made me wonder how and how the hell did I do 225 for 5 reps because the 3 reps were pretty tough. So this is what the load can do to you. This is like a mental kind of um, a, a mental thing when you know that you're doing the load, your body just doesn't want to work as hard and as powerful as it is supposed to be. But it's okay as long as it moves well. 
and you know that you're capable of moving it with good control so as i've mentioned at the start of this video i'm paying more attention to the technique so yeah once again i'm putting a lot of focus on the unracking making sure that i'm feeling great before i bring the weight out and this is my working set for 205 if i'm not wrong i did six reps instead of three reps because uh, likewise the low week i just want to finish my workout and you know when you had the drive to do high repetitions and finish your workout the lift suddenly became much much easier which is why jj is just laughing it's like the whole training before that i'm just complaining how tough everything is and by the time i hit wanted to finish the workout at six reps i just smoked it Alright, so this is my heaviest bench for the week, 152.5. So this is the only chance this week for me to try out a heavier weight with the new cue of the lead engagement as I ascend. And it turned out very very well because the bar speed was very decent and fast. And I felt like I'm pretty much in all control of the bar instead of allowing the bar to control and drop everything and all the arch or the extension that i've created so pretty confident happy about it and moving on to the back off set at three reps yep all right so did i do did i do six or something like that yeah so i think this this is the one that i did six rep at one go if i'm not wrong likewise um this is just me man when I'm deloading I just want to finish the workout as fast as possible so this is the third one you have not bringing back means yep six rep and even after the last rep it was pretty easy yeah guys so please do not copy what I do um, I know what I'm doing after my six rep I feel that yes it's not stressing me out too much so I guess the move that I made is correct so if you guys want to do something like this like a bodo like me uh, you can go ahead but be prepared to suffer the consequences because you may not be as rested as it is supposed to be so just do whatever the coach tell you to do but for me i'm my own coach so i can do whatever i want so this is a last day touch and go bench i prescribe touch and go because i want to get that tension and a bit of a stretch reflex as i push so i can practice same thing the ascent of the lift so everything i'm doing is revolving around that part and last but not least, the last deadlift for the week. Very easy. I believe it's 3 reps. Finishing the lift nice and strong. And I'm ready for the next week. Yep, so there you go guys. This is my deload week. And I hope that you can learn something from there. The tough weeks in my training, I will really push very hard. Not really paying too much attention to the technique. Because I'm already pretty good at adhering to it. So when you are working with this kind of intensity and you're working very hard, you don't really have to pay so much attention to the technique. Just let your body and all your training before that do the work. And when you are back to deload, it is more of like a, a check back week where you pay attention and go back to thinking more about how do I execute the list more efficiently. Especially for this week, I paid a lot more attention in my ascent, my pushing for the bench press. And yeah, so this is how I train. If you guys like it, continue to support us and I will see you again. Goodbye.